So the idea is that the, the gut is the, also the, the habitat of the gut microbiota, so um, with functions, as you know, on, the, on, on health. And uh, yogurt is a product, a food product with live bacteria. So it's probably wanted to focus on uh, things related with the bacteria in their own habitat in, in, in the gut. So then, um, so the idea was also to focus on normal yogurt, so yogurt with thermo uh, Thermophilus and Bulgaricus. We mostly considered uh, yogurt with Thermophilus and Bulgaricus, and also mentioned uh, other fermented milks with added strains for a probiotic value. And um, since the gut microbiota makes um, or contributes to the metabolic functions to, to the, uh, of the gut in terms of uh, uh, helping in the extraction of energy or nutrients from food, the first topic was to check how yogurt has a role in lactose digestion. And uh, Dennis Havayana has made a presentation. He was pioneering these studies some years ago. And in fact, he demonstrated very clearly how in subjects without um, lactase or with, with lactase deficiency in their uh, uh, small bowel mucosa, these individuals, when they eat lactose, they cannot digest lactose. And then this lactose uh, reaches the colon where it's fermented by the gut bacteria and then hydrogen is produced and you can detect hydrogen on breath. You can see here uh, the paper published in, in the New England Journal of Medicine by uh, um, uh, Savayanos uh, group, where you can see the amount of hydrogen on breath in people that were in the green line that were eating lactulose. So lactulose is a disaccharide that we don't have the enzyme, everybody would produce hydrogen or people um, drinking milk, people without lactase. So it's a lot of hydrogen also produced because all the lactose reaches the colon. And uh, people in the yellow line, uh, these people uh, drinking uh, a solution of lactose. But when you, you look at the blue line in the bottom, when these people were, were drinking or a yogurt uh, with, 11 grams lactose or even with 18 grams lactose in the brown line, the production of hydrogen was much lower, indicating that this lactose did not reach the colon. This was digested and absorbed in the small bowel. And this was associated with change, important changes in symptoms. People uh, with, uh, can, that cannot um, digest a la lactose, they ex might experience diarrhea, and with yogurt, it does not happen. They also experience uh, flatulence because it is, uh, oxygen, uh, uh, hydrogen or other gases are generated in, in the colon, and this doesn't happen in, uh, when they take uh, yogurt. So, um, and he also mentioned another study where uh, people were, uh, were allocated in two groups either eat, but it was again people with lactase deficiency were eating uh, heated yogurt and fresh yogurt, the lines at the bottom, and you can see the hydroxine excretion. You can see with fresh yogurt, uh, there is no hydrogen production, so this was a repetition of the same experiment. And the point here was that uh, the D1, so just uh, the, the, the study when was done eating the first heated uh, uh, yogurt with lactose but without live bacteria, these people will produce a lot of hydrogen, you, you can see in the, in the solid line. But when they, 15 days after, when the, the same test was performed, it was a kind of adaptation. So again, uh, sometimes when the lactose reaches the colon and some bacteria might grow and adapt and these people also have 
uh, um, less, um, uh, le le less symptoms. Uh, Lorenzo Morelli, uh, his role was to look at other um, uh, effects on the gut health by yogurt, and he made the point uh, first of uh, bivalent in the gut, which beneficial effects other than lactose is to be needed by viable yogurt bacteria, and viable versus unviable, any difference for gut health. He um, reported about the studies that were looking at uh, recovering yogurt bacteria, Thermophilus and uh, Bulgaricus, Lactobacillus Bulgaricus, and feces from individuals eating yogurts, or drinking yogurts, and he um, reported two studies that were positive, they could recover the bacteria in feces, and one study that was negative, but also he was mentioned that the, uh, it's very important to read carefully the methodology because the last study was done by, by culturing and was probably not, uh, not well done. So they could detect DNA of the bacteria, but not could recover by culture. And then he, uh, this is an interesting study where a particular strain of Bulgaricus, this strain OL 1073 uh, or 1, um, who was found in in vitro study to have an effect on dendritic cells and uh, on the immune system, was then used for studies on elder people to prevent common cold. And he presented, uh, so this, this data where you can see on the figure on your right, the, okay, the incidence or the odds ratio of presenting a common cold in this uh, group of elder people during the winter that was um, reduced by the two studies done with um, uh, this um, yogurt prepared with this particular culture, Bulgaricus culture strain, and also the meta-analysis plotting the two studies. So they would be the, the in vitro uh, observations was also related with a reduction of um, infectious uh, common colds during winter. We did not mention uh, probiotics. I just wanted to, to talk, call here this, um, this uh, paper by Marina Richer, where she, uh, uh, she uh, reviews all the data with using probiotics in different, in different health indications. In these cases are particular probiotics, strains selected for a particular strain. It's not yogurt, so it was not the topic today, but I, I thought it was interesting. So finally, uh, yogurt cultures could have beneficial effects on lactose digestion. Effects on immunity have also been reported and possibly are strain specific, and the effects are related to the ingestion of viable bacterial cells. These were the points for discussion. So thank you. Okay.